you're actually constantly having internal dialogue every single day with yourself, but you only tell yourself the smart things, right? Because the point of an excuse is actually to trick yourself. And the thing is about being busy, it's actually the smartest excuse you can use to trick yourself. Your favorite legitimate excuse is your favorite crutch. It's actually what's holding you back in life, but you might not actually identify it because you What's going on, everybody? My name is Stefan Coons, and welcome to the Everyday Pursuit Podcast. Cast, cast, cast. Uh, I just thought I'd, I'd do a new intro for you. Uh, in all seriousness, though, you know, excuses are a super powerful thing. And, and, and if you're already turned off by this episode, you probably need to listen. Maybe you're like, I don't, I don't want to listen to a lot of mindset stuff. Or maybe because you probably freaking read the title, you're like, I need this right now. And I will be the first to admit that excuses are one of those things where uh, it actually feels really good. Like, and, and you might be like, wait, what? No, no, no. Hear me out. Wait, excuses feel good. Do you know that? Like, I, I want you to understand that concept when we use an excuse. Um, for whatever, and and uh, especially a legitimate one, it feels really, really, really good because what we're doing is we're justifying our inaction or our actions, right? Um, example number one, let's say I said something really mean to somebody. It was an action, right? I said some hurtful crap to him and I'm like, but you made me mad, right? So it feels good to say that because we're actually taking blame off of our action. For example... Well, actually, actually flip side, if we're like, I didn't go to the gym, what I, uh, you know, I got stuck in traffic. That is it's action, right? I get stuck in traffic, but it's an excuse. It feels good because it takes the blame off as a, off of us for inaction. And so just know that when you make an excuse, you're doing it because it's a comfort. It is a mask. And what people do, me included, right? Gotta, gotta do a little self-discovery. What people generally do is they, they walk around and, and they wear a mask all the time of different excuses, but they only hold on to the ones that are legitimate because your, your favorite legitimate excuse is your favorite crutch. It's actually what's holding you back in life, but you might not actually identify it because you've bought into your own bullshit long enough. And it's almost like somebody that it is, is a um, obsessive compulsive liar. Like they lie so much. They've actually, I think they actually believe their own lies. Will you do that to yourself? And the thing is, we believe our own lies, but they're not actually lies, but they're real. And let me break that down. What happens is we say, I can't go to the gym because I'm busy. Now, depending on the person, they could just be full of BS or they could be actually completely busy, right? They like work 12 hour shifts, you know, three days a week, plus pick up over time, plus they got kids. Okay, that person, right, is busy from an object objective standpoint. Like they are very busy. They have a busy life. So that's real. But on the flip side, I work with clients that are that busy or more and they still go to the gym. So how can they make time for the gym, but you don't? And what people do, because we're really, really, really smart, is we don't tell ourselves excuses that don't have legitimacy. Like that, honestly, we'd be able to call ourselves out on our BS. And to break it down further, you're actually constantly having internal dialogue every single day with yourself, but you only tell yourself the smart things, right? Because the point of an excuse is actually to trick yourself. Yeah, yeah, you, not everybody else. I mean, maybe sometimes when you say it out loud, but the excuses you tell yourself in your head that are holding you back from your goals it's actually you tricking yourself because every person has two, two voices. You have the super truthful one and the one that wears masks to get through life, right? Like you're one person, but if you were to like really sit down like alone with yourself in a room and be super vulnerable, you would actually become probably a little bit different, maybe almost identical, but for a lot of people, it's a lot different. Like we, we have to wear these masks to get through life. They become damaging when you can't even be truthful with yourself. And I see this a lot with clients that I, I train, they will say, I'm busy, right? And what, what I do as a coach is I'm like, I validate that you're busy. You are busy, okay? Those are the cards you have. You are a busy person, right? Busy, air quotes, whatever that means to you. Like you have a busy lifestyle. 
Okay, so how can some people with a busy lifestyle, how can they go to the gym and, and make time for the gym five days a week with kids, with career, with everything, and you don't? And they're also busy, probably pretty similar schedule. And really what you see is one person identified that they are busy. It's a legitimate excuse, but they decided that it wasn't going to be a crutch. It wasn't going to be something they leaned on and they used it. And I'm busy. Cool. They are busy, but they also have a goal. So they're going to find solutions instead of looking for barriers. The other person said, I'm busy. And here's where they go wrong. And then they said, oh, I am busy. I can use that is a reason to why I don't take action. Beautiful. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to go around and I'm going to tell everybody that I'm busy. When my family, you know, I want to say like, ah, you put on some weight. Yeah, I'm just busy. And the thing is about being busy, it's actually the smartest excuse you can use to trick yourself and to get external confirmation bias from people, right? That's what that external validation is. It's confirmation bias. Yeah, dude, you are so busy, man. I, I totally get it. I, I get why you're not going to the gym. Man, maybe when things cool down and you say it and you probably say it out loud to people because you want people to buy in and give you a pass on the reason you're not taking action on fill in the blank, right? It's the same thing if you were to get mad at somebody and you were to cuss them out and call them names, it doesn't stop there. You know who you are. You don't just say that. You call your girlfriend or your, you know, if you're a girl or whatever, you call your, your guy friends and you tell everybody about the drama. Why do you do that? Well, you say, well, I'm upset. I just, you know, I wanted to vent. Well, the venting isn't just venting. It is confirmation, right? You want confirmation. Yeah, dude, you know, I totally understand why you said that. I would have been pissed too. And it makes you feel better. It's almost why like the bully wants people to join in on the picking on other people because it makes you feel good. And I will be, I will literally admit right here on this podcast that I've done that, right? I've gotten mad at somebody. And then I like kind of question, like I knew I was in the wrong. So what I've done is I've actually like called other people to like tell them about it. Like, yeah, at event and talk, but also I'm hoping that they have my side, right? Like I'm hoping that's part of the reason I actually called them. Now, now listen in very closely. You do that with yourself. Like, yeah, yeah. The two versions of you, you do that. Like you say, I'm busy, but the one part of you wants to call you out on your shit. Nah, you are busy, Stefan, but that's BS. You can go to the gym. And then I argue with myself. No, nah, like you, okay, yeah, you probably should have gone, but like, you know, you you were actually pretty busy, dude. Like, you know, like that that was a legitimate thing. And then if I can win that battle with the weaker voice, the voice that 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 is, you know, telling me that it's okay, then then I win. And that voice becomes a little bit stronger. And every time I have that kind of internal dialogue and that internal battle. That one that actually wants me and calls me out, it just gets quieter and quieter and quieter. But like I said, you're smart. You're not going to pick the excuses that are totally invalid and don't make sense. You're going to pick the excuses. Time, money, don't have support, busyness, which is also time, right? Uh, lack of knowledge, which is a really terrible excuse in 2023. Like you guys have the whole world in your pocket on a freaking phone. Okay. I mean, I'll give you a real life example. When I started my business, I had a lot of failures in fitness. If you don't know that I've been in the fitness industry for 13 years, I have worked at multiple, multiple franchises, gyms, corporate gyms, being a personal trainer, managing training teams, working in uh, group fitness, uh, working in physical therapy, doing dabbling in fitness modeling. I, I tried my own stuff at in person private training at other gyms, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. I could have used so many excuses. And by the way, I did, which this is what held me back. And the legitimate excuses were the fitness industry sucks, which if you don't know anything about it, it kind of does. If you're an employee, like the pay, if I go get a job at a commercial gym, I'm going to get treated like crap. I'm going to get paid like crap, which is why they're part of the reason I'm um, sitting here. Uh, there's no growth, blah, blah, blah. I told myself all these things. And guess what? I didn't just tell them to myself. I told them to other people in the fitness industry. Why? I wanted them to validate my excuses. I wanted them to validate the fact that I was not where I wanted to be because of other external factors besides me. I didn't want to take full responsibility. It actually felt really, really, really good to be able to sit there and tell somebody, hey, you know, I... Dude, I just haven't been able to get clients. This whole social media thing sucks. Like what? I, you know, I don't have a lot of followers, blah, 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 blah. 
So, th so they're like, yeah, dude, I mean, online, and this is before online training was good. Yeah, online training sucks, dude, that's so stupid. You know, I'm, I'm an educated trainer and I can't get clients. And I was like, yeah. And we just like both bought in it and we both stayed failing and it felt good because I had somebody else that was sucking too. And I see this with people out of shape. They'll sit there and they'll make excuses of, of uh, the, the million things. And you know what? Fit people usually hang out with fit people. And out of shape people generally usually hang out with out of shape people. You might not agree with that, but from my perspective, from what I've seen, it's actually true. And I think what happens is the per and, and not always like, you know, I've, I have friends that are quote unquote out of shape. I have families out of shape. And honestly, I don't judge them, but I know from talking to them that sometimes it makes them feel uncomfortable because when I'm around them and I'm in really good shape, they start analyzing themselves. Like, you know, like nobody, a lot of people don't leave feeling better about themselves. Right. And I've had clients tell me that I've had people tell me that. And this not to put myself on a high horse. I'm just telling you guys that people generally want to hang around with people like them. You don't believe me? Look at society. Why do the rich people, they're all in a neighborhood, right? They don't want to be around the poor people, the homeless people. They don't want them in their neighborhood. Like certain classes are in certain areas. Like people want to be around like-minded individuals. That's why community, whether it's the military or cops or you know first responders, whatever, you guys want to be around like-minded people. And it honestly feels uncomfortable for a lot of people when you're not. It doesn't mean you should hate people. It doesn't mean you should reject people at all. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you from my observation of society and what I've seen. And so generally, you're not going to get somebody that is in really, really good shape hanging around out of shape people. And now it's different because they can help those people. But you usually don't see a bunch of out of shape people choosing to hang around a bunch of in shape people unless they're using them as information and they're aspiring them, that's cool. Go do that. That's awesome. I, I'm totally down for that. But generally, they don't want to. And I think part of it is you, they, want to, they want to get validated. And I'll tell you a personal story. In my family, you know, I, I love my family. But I have people that I, I know within my family, I know I make them uncomfortable when I hang around them. And it's not because I'm better or whatever. I just think it makes them assess themselves that like they're not doing it. Prime example, when I go visit back home, I have people that always make, I don't talk, I don't talk very often about working out when I go back home. Really, I don't. I go to the gym, I only talk about it. People just make comments out of nowhere about me being in shape or them being fat because they're uncomfortable and they start analyzing themselves and they feel weird. So they feel like they have to say something that is always like weird to me. I'm like, okay, cool, man. They're like, yeah, I really need to start working out. I'm like, I didn't even say anything. I just came home. Why did you do that? Why, why would you go do that? And I'm just guessing, I'm not a psychologist, but I'm a mindset coach. I'm guessing they look at themselves and they assume that I'm judging them, which I'm not. And they start, they, they feel uncomfortable. So they're like, I need to say something. He's probably going to notice. And, or maybe they feel bad about this. I don't know. But like the whole point is there's this discrepancy. And I feel that like people feel that they're getting judged, which is honestly a really shitty feeling. I, 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 I hope I don't make anybody feel like that because I really try to help people and support people. But even, even people that I've met that are strangers will say things. I've been to parties where people will see me and they're like, ah, somebody needs to go work out, blah, 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 you know, and kind of make, and they're not shots. They're being kind about it. But it's like, why did you need to say anything? And the reason I'm diving kind of deeper into that is because I want you to understand that like that, the person that said that had a whole internal conversation in their head like about the way they felt or something. There was some dialogue there before they said something. Because you need to understand that your biggest, if, have you ever heard the saying like, the big your biggest enemy is you? Yeah, you, but not you, the other version of you, right? The, the version that's a little bit weaker, the version that wears masks, the version that tells yourself all the excuses, legitimate or not, and, and check this out. I want to validate your excuse. Just like I do to my clients. And I can check this out. Hear me out. I actually probably believe, well, now, because that sounds like I'm unvalidating it. I 100% believe that you are probably, and I say probably because I don't know who's listening to this, that you are busy. Legitimately busy. I'm not saying that just to say it. I do think a lot of people are extremely busy, which is 
could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. Sometimes people overtask themselves, which is also on you. But if you're crushing it and you're busy because you're taking on a lot and bettering yourself, awesome. I support that. I'm super busy. I also want to validate that you probably might not have support. Maybe you're unsupportive. Maybe you have a spouse that tries to sabotage your food or they're not fit and you're fit and that's hard. Maybe you're broke and you're poor. So I want to validate your money situation. Um, maybe you lack knowledge. Maybe you're like, oh, I don't know. I try to research on the internet and this person says to do this thing and this and this. That is very real. That's why we coach people one-on-one -on -one online and have transformations. Like we do a very good job at clarifying information, guiding, keeping them accountable. I want to validate that. Okay, now, now that that's been validated, I also want to let you know that people with all those things and probably worse have had the success that you're wanting to have. Just know that. That's a fact. That is a fact. If you go do enough research, you will find somebody that is almost identical in your situation that has done what you're wanting to do. So now you have two choices. You can be like what you maybe have already done in your life. Nah, you don't know, bro. You don't know. No, my situation's different. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. And you're still going to be where you are and you're not going to have what you want. That's option one. Or option two, which is what I did in business, where I'm like, okay, they're really similar. What did they do? Because I mean, they're really busy. They, they're broke. They have all these things. What did they do? How did they become successful? And just emulate that. And you could kind of make it your own, but basically I just want to copy that person instead of reinvent the wheel. That's option two. And option two is what people do when they come work with us because they go, hey, this coach knows what he's doing. This team knows what they're doing. They've already done it. Instead of me trying to figure it out on my own, obviously they work with other busy people. They figured out how to help them. I, I want to do it, right? They didn't pick option number one where they kept making excuses. And, and again, guys, you're not going to pick excuses that are stupid. You get that? When you have that internal dialogue and you need to convince yourself that it's okay to not go to the gym, not meal prep and not blah, blah. You're not going to be like, oh, it's because my toe hurts. Like you're going to say legitimate things because the legitimate things make you feel good and they're real. And because they're real, you can keep buying into them without feeling is bad. We're smart. We're really smart. Okay. We're really, really smart when we, when we do that. And if you can understand that inter internal dialogue, I have good news for you. That also means you can flip it around. That also means you can change the conversations that you continuously have in your head and you can call that version out on their BS. Uh-uh. You know what, Stefan? You are busy. You are really busy. And, and because you're busy, you need to get super organized. We're going to sit down. We're going to go to the computer. We're going to actually time block and put it on Google Calendar in a color when you're going to work out. Oh, Netflix? Okay. You have two hours of Netflix. You're going to bump that up. You're going to take 30 minutes off that. That's when your workout's going to be. Wow. I validated that I was busy and I still made it happen. Hey, Stefan, you're really broke. You don't have any money, so you can't afford this. Cool. What would somebody do that has no money? But like, what would they do? Well, you don't need money to get fit. All right, they would start doing push-ups. Get down and do push-ups. I don't know, they'd go on a run. Start running. There's so much free resources, by the way, so you not exercising because of lack of information is, I mean, we just gotta throw that out the window. We gotta throw that out the window. You could do something. Maybe you don't have support. Fine. Then have the conversation with your spouse. Have those things, which I talked about, I think, on last episode. Like, your excuses are, are totally fine to have. They're real things. And that's everybody. And when I say excuse, I know you might think it's just a negative connotation. It's, it's let's put it in a different word, barrier. Your barrier is maybe a real thing for you. Your barrier to you being as consistent is because you're busy. Cool. So are you going to be as consistent as some single 20-year-old dude? Nope, you're not. Like that is not you, right? That you're just, you're not going to be able to, and that's fine. But like, you need to acknowledge the excuse or barrier, and then you need to go solve it. Okay. Right. And most people work a lot better on a reward system than they do a negative system. And that's part of the reason that like we set goals with our clients and we're trying to be really tangible because I don't want it being like, uh, like I don't want you thinking too, please don't think this of me. I don't want you to think that I am the person that says nobody cares, work harder. Because that's a big thing right now. The whole David Goggins, Andrew Tate thing, if you know who they are, is basically like, F your feelings, do it anyways. Now, I do think there's a lot of power in temporarily, temporarily, emotionally disconnecting from your feelings to execute. I talk about this a lot on my podcast. And that's really the preface of like everything that gets accomplished in the, in the world that's like meaningful. I think somebody did that, 
right? And and if you, you haven't listened to an episode, I'll give you a super good example in a lot of areas. I don't want to do this work from my boss, but it needs to be done. So I'm doing it anyways. I don't want to play with my kids because I'm so exhausted, but my kids want to spend time with me. So I'm doing it. I don't want to go to the gym because I just don't feel like it today. I'm unmotivated, but I'm going because I want to get in shape, right? Temporarily, emotionally disconnecting and executing. Very, very powerful tool. But I don't think that nobody cares work works harder is good because that's un, that's invalidating the person's excuse and it's saying, yeah, 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 just work anyways. No, no, no. I'm telling you to validate it. And it might seem foo-foo, but it actually will help you break past the barrier because if somebody goes, nobody cares, work harder, then you can use the excuse. Yeah, but you don't know. I can't work past this. I'm busy, I'm busy, busy. It doesn't actually solve that. It solves it when you go, okay, you're you're busy. Let's look at your schedule. We actually have actionable steps that help you. That's the difference. That is the difference. In every area of your life, you should be doing that instead of grinding through it because the grind is fine, but the grind only works for so long. Take that from somebody that worked the last three years uh, 80 to 90 hours a week, six to seven days a week, you get burnout. And I would consider myself extremely dedicated and a grinder and hard worker, but it's not a fun life and you burn out. I don't care who you are. You can't just work, work, work. You can't just grind through it forever. Temporarily? Sure. And everybody's temporary is is longer than somebody else's. Some people's is a day, hour, week, months, years, but you know, you're not gonna you know, probably wanna grind that much. Um, and here's some actionable steps. Number one, you need to change your narrative. The conversation that you have in the eternal dialogue in your head with yourself every day, it has to change. You have to get better at calling out yourself when you start using those legitimate excuses. Understand that the version of you that wants best for yourself is actually the smarter version. You're just letting the one that gives you the legitimate excuses be the more powerful version. And how do I know that? Because there's a little voice when you say you're busy that knows you're full of shit. So that's how I know that one shot. Like, ah, like, I am busy, but you make time for what's most important. Like I am broke, but if I really wanted to, I could find a way to make extra money, right? I don't have an unsupportive spouse, but like, I guess I could do this and have the conversation with her to make it a little bit better, right? Like those things, you call yourself out, their voice is maybe so quiet because you've been shushing it for so long, but it can get louder. Um, and if it gets louder, it's better. Number two, look for solutions. That, that voice is also the voice that looks for barriers. Ah, oh, you can't do it because of this. Can't do it because of this. You can't do it because of this. Oh yeah, this, oh, don't forget that. That's standing in your way too. Instead of just being like, yeah, I'm doing this and uh, I will solve all the problems along the way, which is what I did for my business. I was like, I'm doing this business. Whatever comes in my way, I will solve it. Uh, and unless I die, I'm gonna accomplish it. And maybe I, could, I wouldn't have, but like that's the mindset. And I've seen people come through our program that have done that. They're like, this is what I'm doing. I'm paying the year up front. Let's go. I'm with a coach. And they've run into a ton of adversity, but they're just, they already made up their mind. There's no turning back. Option A, which I talk about a lot too, backing yourself in a corner. And that is solution focused because you're like, the solution is to go all in. And if I don't go all in, it's really easy to be like, oh, I don't have this and I don't have this and I don't have this. No, you just need to do it all. Okay. Number three, you should actually get mad at yourself. Like you should be a little bit pissed at yourself that you've been letting yourself hold on to these legitimate crutches for a very long time. For some of you, it's a year. For some of you, it's two years, three years, five years, 10 years. And look, I held on to legitimate crutches in my life, um, sometimes with fitness, but a lot of times in other areas of my life where I had things that I felt I felt really strongly. I'm like, but, but you don't get it. Like this thing's real, but it didn't actually, like me feeling that way and validating it to myself didn't change the shitty situation, right? Like, it's almost like you having a bad relationship with a parent. You're like, well, but you don't get it. They're like this. Okay, cool. Awesome. Do you still have a bad relationship? Well, yeah. Okay. So now that we've put all the blame on the other person, do you, do you feel better? Kind of. Okay. But your relationship that you want better is still shitty, right? Cool. So me validating you, fine. Did It, it didn't actually change anything. So it feels good. It's a temporarily, it's a temporary, uh, it feels better, right? It's like, it's like a spray on numbing, right? It's really quick. It works, but like, it doesn't actually solve the problem. So you should get a little bit mad that you maybe bought into this. And maybe this podcast is helping you open up. And you're like, damn, I do that, bro. You're calling me out. Yes, I'm calling you out. And I had to have a lot of these internal conversations with myself. Part of the reason guys that I do these podcasts is I've had to go through these own things with me. Yes, I do it with clients. I've worked with thousands of clients. That's helps for sure. 
But like I've had to have these conversations with myself. I'm the crazy dude that drives in the car and talks to myself. Don't judge me or not. And I have these conversations just because you're already having them in person, right? I mean, in your head. So I just, sometimes I talk out loud, not gonna lie. And I go to these realizations and I have to kind of like take off that mask and be brutally honest. And then once you have that breakthrough, it is a glorious thing. So let's say you do all the things. You have the, you change your internal narrative. You start looking for solutions. You you get a little bit mad because I think that's good. I think that's fuel to the fire. Like you should be a little bit pissed. If you come at a goal with a little bit of anger and vengeance, it's way stronger. I mean, why do you think that people that get cheated on and they have like a blow up transformation and you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? And you're like, damn, yeah, they did it with a little bit of anger. Good. You want some freaking fuel to the fire. That's actually a really good thing. It's like the people that say, yeah, you can't do this. Be like, tell me I can't and you're going to watch me. No, that's real. That's a real thing. I've had some people that doubted me in the beginning of my journey and I still remember. I still remember. And I know they don't even know. I know they don't even know about the conversation, but I held on to it. And you may be like, dude, Stefan, you're petty. Um, I'm not mad about it, but I actually need it. I'm literally like my heart is free from it. Um, I mean, maybe not a hundred percent cause I'm mentioning it, but I, I, I like it. I was like, Ooh, Ooh, that's good. Put that in the box. I'm going to use that. I'm not mad at the person. I love the person I talk to all the time. But my thing is when people say that you can internalize that and, and you should be mad that you said that to yourself, you should be mad that you've been following in or uh, falling in the trap of you. You have been following in the trap of you for who knows how many years. And you might not, not even notice it because you're smart and you told yourself legitimate things. And if you listen to this whole episode and you're like, dude, but like, I get what you're saying, but like, I, I am busy and I don't have time, then change your situation, which is the fourth action step, which is start taking action to change it. If you are having these conversations with yourself and you are, these are legitimate crutches and they are, there's so many barriers with each of those categories that you literally can't do anything then you have royally screwed yourself and you need to start changing the situation. If you're like, I literally don't have time to work out. Well, I would be very surprised if you weren't. The only people that I know that legitimately don't have time uh, are people that way overtask themselves with business and work. And that's kind of their own fault. And they probably shouldn't do that, right? Um, you should pull back. You should be able to exercise and take care of your, your body, mind, and spirit, okay? Number two, the, old, the other people, I guess, are the people that say they don't have time. And actually, the people that say they don't have time, it's usually an energy thing. Like, well, I, I do, but like by the time I get home, it's 8 p.m. and I worked 14 hours and am I supposed to work out? And it's just about strategizing and changing it. For example, we work with a lot of first responders. I worked with this person that was a nurse that worked three 12-hour shifts, but they were picking up extra shifts all the time. And I was like, well, why? Oh, I have all these things to pay off and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so... You might have been a little bit financially irresponsible, right? Or maybe not made the best decision. And so now you put yourself in a hole where you have to work so much that you really don't have time or energy to work out. That was poor planning. Now, can you change that situation in a snap of a second? I don't know. I'm not in your bank account. I think you could move towards it. Hey, in the next three months, I'm going to change my payment option so I can work one less shift and start working out. Like you could do something. I would say that. I would challenge that, right? Unless you're just comfortable with, with again, that's a legitimate excuse, totally legitimate, but your situation still sucks. It's still keeping you from, from what you want to do. And if that's not where you want to be, then I, you get what I'm saying? Like, where, where are we going? We're running freaking circles. Okay. Last thing. If you are listening to this and you're somebody where you're like, look, I, I do tell myself those things and I need to make a change and you don't know how. I want to have a conversation with you legitimately. Like I, I want to talk to you and I want to see if we can help you. Um, but even if you're not, right, even if you're not, I take this episode, you don't have to talk to me. Just some people want a route that is, that is quicker and they want it done for them. And honestly, if you've already had all these barriers, the only way to really get past it, like everything at once is have somebody help you go through this process quicker. You probably already tried to do it on your own and it didn't work for months years, maybe even decades. So at some point you got to lay down and be like, all right. I mean, if it's important to you, you know, in January, this month alone, we've already had tons and tons and tons of people make that decision because they tried things on their own and it didn't work. And all these legitimate excuses, which a lot of them had a ton of them, but they're like, they are excuses and I don't want them to be excuses anymore. So I'm going to 
I'm going to work with a coach to help me solve these things so I can't use them as excuses, right? That's what information does. You know that, right? Well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. But now you know. And once you know, you have to take responsibility. And that's scary. And I think some people are very avoidant with knowing and doing the real thing and the right thing. Because once you know, once you're really truthful with yourself, it, it, it breeds action. You have to take action. It's very hard to continue to lie to yourself once you've taken off that mask. You're like, ooh, now next time you go to lie, you're like, okay, come on, come on. You know, last time you tried that, that shit too and you didn't get away with it, right? Remember, that's the internal conversation you have with your head and you get better at it. And then eventually that voice just doesn't even do it. Like I don't have the voice in my head that like tries to convince me that like it was okay, I didn't work out. That voice died quite a while ago. doesn't mean he never comes up, but I shut him up very, very quickly. I'm like, yeah, but like, and, and if I miss the gym, cause I'm not perfect, by the way, I miss the gym. If I miss the gym, I own it and I solve it. I'm like, yeah, you missed the gym cause you were a poor planner. You're going to sit down to your calendar and you're going to make that shit work. Or, ah, you missed the gym cause you overtasked yourself and that's your fault, Stefan. Do you want to keep missing the gym? No, you need to, you need to solve it. You're a grown up. And I kind of talked to myself a little bit rough because I remember it's that one voice that's trying to be sneaky. It's trying to be sneaky. It's trying to get you to do things you don't want to do. It's, it's the voice of you that tr and it's it, honestly, it's just trying to keep you safe. Like at a, at a cognitive level, I think that voice is just people say, Oh, it's the devil, whatever. I think that voice is part of you. That's trying to get you to, to stay safe and, and not do things that make you uncomfortable. People don't necessarily seek discomfort working out and eating a certain thing and doing all this work. Like we'd just rather relax, right? So that one voice really wants you to be comfortable and um, I'm not gonna dive into the science behind it, but like there is a part of your brain that wants the comfort and there's another one that wants the drive and pushing you. And unfortunately in 2023, we live in a society of tons of comfort and ease. And I think it gets easier to tell that voice, like give into that voice and tell the other voice, you know, ah, no, not today or not today or not today. And I know it gets easier because that's how people end up getting 50 pounds overweight, right? Or, or more. Like, how does that happen? And I can tell you generally it happens because that one voice just got like really good or really smart. Um, and the other voice that wanted to stick up for what they really wanted, it got shushed. And it got shushed so much that it doesn't even talk anymore. And now the the excuse isn't even a, it's not even a conversation anymore. It's not even an argument. It's just like, I'm not going to the gym. And, and people might look at that person and be like, how can they not work out? Oh yeah, the voice died. The voice that you have that like kind of makes you feel guilty and like shit when you miss the gym or don't eat your food or you eat trash. Oh, yeah, that voice doesn't exist in their head anymore or it's so quiet they can't hear it, which is sad, but that is maybe the path you're going down. Those same people probably said, I'll never get to that point. Okay. You listen to that voice anymore? <laughs> do you do it? only you know, but you have a choice. And uh, I gave you the action steps. You have no excuse, but be careful. Be careful because the conversations that you have with yourself about your decisions in your head every day, they add up and they will dictate literally the rest of your life. Appreciate it, guys. I love you. I'll talk to you next time.